Hey everybody, let's get the 7 Days to Die Mod Launcher Legacy version installed. Alrighty, first and foremost, you need to make sure your 7 Days to Die installation is updated completely on Steam. Check, all done. Next, you're going to want to download the Mod Launcher, and I'll also include a link to it in the description of the videos. You want to go to this page, and you want to look for this, the setupinstaller.msi legacy version. If you get the Windows installer up on top, even if you're on Windows, you're going to get the Unity version, which at this point, not everybody is completely happy with. So we're not talking about that one anyways. You're going to go ahead and download it. I've already got a copy of it here, so I'm not going to bother. You're going to go ahead and either right-click and install, or double-click on it and run it. After it installs, you will get this. First, you want to make sure, up at the top, go to your Steam version, and make sure that this is pointing to your current 7 Days to Die installation in your Steam folder, whichever drive, or uh, wherever you've got that put. Once that's done, oh, uh, also make sure that EAC is unchecked here if by default it is. It's been so long since I installed this, I can't remember if it starts out that way or not. Then, in our case, we would be installing the Where's UK Alpha 20 All-in-One Overhaul. I have it installed already, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you just Undead Legacy. Uh, you'll notice that there are red X's there. You'll get the same thing when you look at the Where's UK. So once you're at that point, you'll come to this page and make sure a copy from an existing copy is checked. This should be pointing to your seven days to die installation that we set up earlier. And go ahead and install the game copy. Boom. Once that's done, you'll be presented with this screen. And you can go ahead and before you do anything else, you want to go to it and you'll see this screen. First and foremost, uh, the beginning of the mod is installed, but not all the files are there yet. The very first thing you need to do is go ahead and click this pre-sync button. Bam. Uh, you'll see at the bottom some updates. Uh, it'll show quite a number of files that are being downloaded to your system. It's getting the mod. Once it's finished, you can either just click on Play Mod, or if you happen to close the launcher and reopen it, you'll end up back here again, and you should now see in the Installed Mod section this. And you're just going to go ahead and Click on play to get rolling. Now one thing about this, back on this screen right here, some things you want to make sure um, that you pay attention to. Uh, make sure use EAC is unchecked. Um, otherwise that's going to present problems and you're going to get all sorts of errors when you start the game. In the event that you want to reinstall it, you can go ahead and use delete complete. I have always had update registry checked. Um, I don't really know what the difference will be if you have that checked or not. Never had a problem with it being checked. And I, out of preference, save all games local to the mod. So that's pretty much it. It doesn't get any more difficult than that. Let's go ahead and show you what we're going to look like. Now, when you go to play the game, if you're going to play the overhaul, you're not going to want to use your Steam button to play uh, because it's not going to even look for the launcher. It's not going to start running the files in the launcher directories. You need to play the game from the mod launcher like so. I'm going to go ahead and click on play. Next, bonus round. The very first time you install the overhaul, 
people often ask, well, um, what map can I play? The default maps that come with Seven Days to Die will not, and I repeat, will not work with the overhaul. You need to go ahead and generate yourself a map. Where's UK has generously and graciously included and uh, edited random world generator configuration file within the system that is going to give you some pretty cool results. A lot of us enjoy it. Go ahead and pop on that random gen previewer. Set your world seed to whatever you wish or nothing at all. Set your world size. And for the people out there that may be wanting more cities, more uh, wilderness POIs, and a lot less dead space on the map, I'm going to show you some recommended settings here. Many, many. Now for me personally, rivers just to me take up unnecessary space. There's almost always going to be water on the map in places. Uh, POIs have their own areas and sections of water, but uh, typically at the borders of the map there's always going to be water there. So if you're running mods like uh, fishing or boating or something like that, you're going to be able to utilize that towards the edges of the map. If you do want some water spots on the map, you can go ahead and set these to what you wish. but for as an example my maps that I always run on my multiplayer servers this is where I go and trust me you can play with this if you wish too but even setting something like mountains or hills to even something as low as one is going to have a dramatic effect on how much or how many towns and how many wilderness POIs are out there. Feel free to experiment with it as you will, but one of my favorite maps to load up here is just that right there. I'm going to go ahead and I will generate the world, but in this case I'm going to knock this way down to something small so it's not going to take so long. Also, take note of the city name, because when you go to start a new game, this is the map that you're going to wish to use. So let's go ahead and generate that world. And once this begins, I'm going to continue recording, but when I go to process the video, I'm going to speed this section up. So typically, it's going to take X amount of minutes per K of the map. So this should take six to eight minutes if you go all the way up to where I usually hang out at is in the uh, 12k range this usually takes 12 to 15 minutes depending on the quality and the beefiness of your system so let's bring that down and go ahead and generate the world now something a lot of people have a problem with the random world generator is uh, they'll complain well it crashes on me it doesn't work it doesn't save when you get to this stage when you're going to be working with the world generator you can't do anything else on your computer bro you get this going once this begins its process don't touch anything walk away from it go get some coffee go get a beer go whatever you know do whatever you're going to go do because it, on my system anyways and uh, multiple other systems that I've ran the random world generator on it will crash out and I'm not going to you know do that for demonstration purposes or anything like that but trust me if I was to move my mouse around and say for example pop into another window or uh, start doing something else nine times out of ten the random world generator is going to crash so let it go through this process and let it finish up towards the end of this you'll see a prompt that will say that the uh, map has been generated there is a certain point that you can go ahead and back out of this if you don't want to wait around for the map to display on the screen okay it's almost finished here and in a minute or so there we are 
That prompt right there, generation complete, time elapsed, 2 minutes 58 seconds. Once something like that shows up, you can go ahead and back out and jump in and start playing or I'm going to end up pausing and speeding things up a little bit, I guess, to bring it up to that point to show you what the end result on this screen will look like. This way you can kind of see what your map is going to look like, where all of the map POIs, cities, and things like that are going to end up at. Again, the trick is during this part of the process, don't touch the computer, don't do anything else, don't goof around, don't uh, multitask, don't click on any buttons or anything like that. Just wait for the map on the right hand side to populate. There we are, and you'll notice, depending on the speed and beefiness of your computer again, this could happen pretty fast or this might take a little while. I've got a lot going on in the background on the computer, so it's going to take a little bit longer. I'll speed this up and get you to the end result, and then a few final thoughts on that, and you'll be good to go. Otherwise, if you don't want to wait for this part, you're ready to play the game with the map that you've already generated. This is just kind of showing you what you're going to end up with. All right, it's at this point you're pretty much ready to start playing the game. You need to go to the New World, select the map as shown here. You can name the game to whatever you wish. You're ready to rock. Um, oh, and you can also set uh, some of the more advanced and basic settings for the game to suit your tastes. You're ready to go. Enjoy.